My um, first experience of, you know, going into crop circles was purely around the time the BBC were filming in Westby on the Westby White Horse, doing a study on some of the crop circles. And it just so happened that night that I was leaving my house to go into the back garden and hang some washing up. And as I did, I saw what I can only explain as triangular craft in the sky with three lights on each tip and sort of more sort of deep red light in the middle. And I was quite shocked and startled by this and ran back in to grab my mum for her to have a witness of it. And my mum came out, but she didn't catch it. It was too late for her to see. And I found myself sort of lying to my mum and saying, I need to fill up my car with fuel for work tomorrow, knowing that the only 24-hour garage was about sort of eight, nine miles away towards Westbury where the BBC were filming and towards the same direction this craft was going. So I um, sort of left to more or less pursue what I'd seen and ended up going up on top of the White Horse and approaching sort of the area where the BBC were. And it was then that I made sort of acquaintances with a lot of people from sort of the crop circle background, Colin Andrews, Pat Delgado, and um, some of my good friends today. And it sort of happened that the next day down in the field, sort of about half a mile away to their left, was this large circle with three circles around it, in very similar fashion to the look of the craft and the side of this craft. And then the night that the actual circle appeared, that um, the BBC cameras didn't catch it appearing, was a very sort of strange night because we all seemed to be knocked out. We all seemed to want to just all go to sleep at that point of the night. We all just felt compelled to sleep and awoke the next morning to find the circle there. And I just find it very strange because we all kind of questioned each other the next day. You know, when did we go to sleep? And it's almost like we couldn't all remember when we went to sleep. And usually, you know, at least one person would have a recollection of, you know, oh yeah, we decided to go to sleep at this time or okay, something so like that, yeah, but that never yeah. happened. Yeah. So, um, so it all came about when me and another sort of crop circle enthusiast we were looking out there at the crop circles appearing at the time, decided upon making an effort to make a circle. Firstly, to see the difference between what we were seeing out there in the fields, what we thought was to be genuine, and what a human could do, and what sort of damage it would cause to the crop compared to some of the ones we'd seen. And also, um, for other reasons, to do with sort of supernatural events, whether there was any sort of form of contact with anything that was there, or whether any energy would, you know, sort of assimilate around us as we were doing the circle. So we wanted really as test purposes to go out and see for our own personal reasons whether that would make it. And so we sort of set about looking at sort of designs, what sort of design to make. It was um, less complicated in our mind. We didn't want to go too complex or make too big a circle because we were purely just on the basis of research, seeing the difference between the two. And the first circle was um, a grass sort of circle over near Warminster. And it was partly just to provoke interest through the military because it was right next to a military base and to just watch over it for a while and see whether they were taking an interest. Because to us, if they took an interest, then there must be something going on within the military group that was taking it seriously. There seemed to be quite a buzz around it especially as it was just in plain sort of long grass 
which was sort of what they would feed the cattle on really. And they would just come and mow it down. So, you know, on that account, you wouldn't expect there to be much of a fuss as in towards damage because, you know, it could easily all still be collected and used for that same purpose. And so we did see sort of military coming down and taking a look, taking a few photographs. So that was quite interesting in that respect. And then we um, moved on to um, sort of a rape seed oil field, knowing that the crop was very brittle. And that one was more on the purpose of seeing whether any energies would sort of accumulate around the circle we made or around us as we were making it, or whether any other abnormal events would happen. And then another time where we made a couple additions to sort of an outstanding circle that was there already. And that was sort of on sort of an experiment to see, you know, whether there was any form of contact by adding something to an existing design that could have been sort of made by some other force other than human. We um, took people from the sort of circle groups and like gave them an anon anonymous tip off just so that none of them would be caught out by the circle that we'd made because we weren't out there to try and stitch people up. It was a purely for our own research purposes we found on that one that um, rapeseed oil is very brittle and with rapeseed oil you more or less would always snap it as soon as you start pressing it down to the ground and we also remember removing some of the really damaged crop and taking them with us and disposing of it um, only to find later when we saw photographs of that very circle but a lot of the rapeseed oil was actually perfectly bent and wasn't snapped like it was when we saw it when we made it mm. which was very sort of intriguing to us yeah it's almost like something had come and tidied up behind us you know and it was sort of on that very occasion that that one happened but um people in the local village reported seeing lights and sort of strange sort of glow on the hills, which was opposite near the field where we were. So it's quite interesting to hear back through just local talk that that happened on the same night. We were looking at the circle, photographing it and using the pole to sort of take some aerial view shots of it. And myself and my friend just felt compelled to add just two additions to that existing circle and they weren't large portions or anything. It's maybe only sort of two foot square of crop that was actually pushed down in the process of that. But from, felt compelled to add it to this one particular circle on the actual overall design that was already there. And with that, my friend said, give us a sign. You know, he said, if there's something out there, and it is intelligent, then give us a sign. And we left the field and never thought much of it and went back to sit in the car. And I was just looking through some sort of local books of the area we were in and looking that we were sort of more or less on one of the lines, the ley lines in the area where we parked. And with that, my friend sort of heard a sound, which I tried putting down to being me with my foot on the clutch pedal and he said that he didn't think it was that and so I just kept on reading the book and um, then I heard the same sound again with my friend and with that the car violently shook from side to side which to me and my friend was like at the time rather scary because there's nothing that could have forced the car to shake so violently I mean, if people were there, you would have seen them doing it. And so I decided to sort of start the car in rather sort of a hurried fashion and get out of there. And as we sort of flew down the lane to get away, saw some lights 
sort of disappear behind the clouds up in the sky and saw an owl on the fence fly off in a very sort of scared fashion. I remembered reading sort of a lot sort of further on, a few years more down the line, reading one of Whitley Stryber's books. Um, and he explained how through different things in people's lives, trauma, stuff we do as a human condition, try to mask these things that happen that hurt us with other images or other circumstances to hide any hurt or you know any fear factor there. And Whitley Stryber's um, dealings with different people from abduction and other things led him to believe that what with the pictures people have drawn of what they claim to be aliens, having large almond sort of shaped eyes, um, a lot of the time they would relate to seeing something like an owl or some creature which did have those sort of eyes, which they could deal with. In their sort of mind they could deal with that and be happy with that, rather than sort of what they may have seen. It's almost like a false sort of memory sort of that we have in our mind just to protect ourselves from that fear. Because no one could think of what we were thinking that night. And because it was quiet where we were, we discussed what we were thinking of and how we wanted to summon a circle to be made in the field, and expecting it to be made in the field that we were in. And my friend said, well, let's think of something that maybe is similar to the Star of David or, you know, has six points to it, something like that. And the same thing happened after we'd left doing the meditation, went back to the woods. We all remember, more or less, just falling asleep again, just being sort of knocked out, you know, and couldn't remember when any of us actually did fall asleep. You know, it's, it's all we kind of remembered was kind of a flash in our faces sort of thing and just waking up the next morning. The next day, a um, friend of ours, Traveller, came up and told us about the circle that had appeared that just so happened to be a six-petaled flower and we went down to examine it and we found that it wasn't the circle in the middle of the six petals it was actually, if you lifted the crop gently, six-sided in the centre so it was actually, you know, hexagon and they had two trademark D and D next to it, where um, Doug and Dave claimed that they made it. But to this day, even though they said they made it, we believe they put their hallmark on it after discovering it themselves. So to this day we believe, you know, that was a genuine circle that appeared. And Doug and Dave, who had claimed to make some of them just down the road anyway, may have been on their way back from making one saw this circle and come and added their D&D &D to it because we did find the D&D &D part to be all broken all the crop was snapped but looking at the petal and each petal individually the crop was actually perfectly bent and we wondered how they could honestly know what we were asking for so we had a chance in Andrew Collins but to explain that it doesn't really bother me what other people believe in crop circles because it comes down to, I think, individuality and what you believe at the end of the day. But it sort of bothers me that people do think it's all just fake, you know, and people are doing that. Because if you trace circles back as far as they went, you would think, why would people want to make them back then? There was no hoo-ha or media hysteria around the subject, nothing. And like the Moan Devil picture in the book, you know, why would it date back so far back when in times like that people would have no reason to go out and start making crop circles? So it bothers me in that sense. It bothers me also because I feel there is a genuine phenomenon out there. But also I do like the fact that these people who do make circles make some very fine art. 
and I think as an art form, these people do it very well. And why not have something beautiful like that on the landscape? You know, it kind of cheers people up. Just on one experience with friends, where we went past one field one night near Beckhampton, but um, one minute the field was empty. Within five minutes of saying we were going the wrong way and turning around and coming back past the same field, there was a design of three circles joined by lines between within five minutes. And these were large circles as well. And then to find later, sort of, you know, but after visiting them with the friends who were with me, and one friend had gone off, he just got in a funny mood that night, and so he decided to leave, and he said he was going to hitch back. And then finding out that the three of us who went into that circle ended up with sickness and diarrhoea for a couple of days, and the friend who'd left to go back never had sickness and diarrhoea which I found very strange. You know, it couldn't be put down to any other cause, but us going into that same circle together so early, just after it had formed. Yeah, because um, it happened sort of, I went back the next day, um, left my friend's house feeling very tired, even though we'd had sleep. And my friend's mother didn't want me to drive home to where I lived a few villages away. She said I was welcome to stay over because I didn't look too well. I, I just wanted to make the journey home. So I went home and I went to bed early. And it was only sort of, you know, the next day. But I sort of felt a bit more energised again. And sort of upon getting up and having a shower and freshening up for the morning, I um, found a triangular mark on my arm, which I couldn't explain, and which, you know, took a photo of, and luckily for me I did, because it disappeared not more than ten minutes later. And also just to find that my watch had lost about half an hour of time at the same time as well, which to me just seemed very strange, especially from feeling so sort of low, to suddenly feeling sort of so awake and so alive again. So sort of UBI spawned from my mind. I just woke up one day and it was just like it was in my head, UBI. And it very much meant um, united believers of intelligence. From sort of UFO sightings and stuff, it really came about that I had an open mind and my mind had opened up enough and I'd seen things that no longer could I just put down to being classic ice crystals in the sky reflecting light and things like that. So UBI spawned from that, but um, UBI, UBI wasn't really about just two individuals, it was about people coming together and sharing the experience and look at different sort of sides of it, not just the crop circles, but spirituality, sort of ghosts, a lot of sort of beliefs that people have in sort of the spiritual world and in the world of the paranormal. And it came from there really. I would say yes, it angers me that some people make money from the subject in crop circles itself. Um, because there was a lot of people at the time out there, and if it wasn't money, it was kind of fame, all we trying to grab their slice of something, which was like deemed quite magical at the time. And I felt everyone just wanted to be recognised as someone, some sort of authority, whereas we went around not sort of trying to be recognised, but trying to look at the whole thing openly and generally. And we could see these other people just sort of jumping on the bandwagon and trying to make a name for themselves. And of course, making money from sort of crop circle conferences, etc. You know, I just felt it was disgusting that we went to one crop circle conference down in Glastonbury. And we had a lot of information and a lot to give to people there to talk about openly in sort of debate. 
and it was purely on the basis that we didn't have the money but we couldn't really go in to do that and I felt sort of a bit disgusted but that's what it had come down to was money and such sort of extortionate prices just to go into a debate and um, it just so happened that we'd met a couple of nice people out there sort of looking at the circles and they felt that we had something better to give into the debate about the actual subject and money to them was no object, they did have a lot of money but they said what was more important was the actual subject itself and they turned around and paid for myself and another member of the UBI to go in and you know, get our point of view across so I was quite happy to do that but I just found that it was very sort of based around tourism and, and just trying to make a bit of money along the way and my approach has always been but this is something that I sort of felt was important and had more substance than just people making them as well and I didn't think it was right that people should be able to jump on the bandwagon so easy. Um, I wouldn't say that some circle making was trying to pull the wool over people's eyes, but I have seen people who've tried to do that, purely sort of on the basis of TV and the way that sometimes they wanted to make a mockery of the subject. Because you've got a subject that was, at the time, becoming very powerful, very in the public mind, and very open. And you could see, in some ways, the authorities trying to push that back. Because it's a very powerful thing, having too many people with open minds out there. Because the state we live in in the world, where they do like to have control, even though we like to think we control our lives, they do have control over us. And I think something as powerful and quite moving and supernatural and unexplained was sort of jumped on by certain agencies to try and sort of calm public attention by using some crop circle makers and trying to use the people that thought it was genuine and trying to stitch people up at the same time. So. I'd say some of them did it for that reason, but also they probably were paid for that. But generally, I wouldn't say that everyone was out there just to pull the wool over everyone's eyes. I do know of one group that did have a weird experience. They were going out just to do it purely for those reasons, with the actual circle making. Those teams were actually going out to sort of go about it in the wrong way. And their experience, I remember, was quite frightening for one person because as he was going round the crop and flattening it, he felt, like I said, that something was watching him and it took quite a bit to get this out of this person. But he felt that something was watching him and as he started going round and getting a little bit more nervous, and this was people that wouldn't usually be nervous, they'd gone and made circles before, so, you know, they had no reason to be frightened in the field. They weren't doing it all on their own. There was a group of them.